My name is Keith Hall, and welcome to another NASC Minute. Congratulations on creating another new job because you have a new worker. One of the things you need to decide is, is that worker an employee or an independent contractor? Now, many small business owners want that worker to be an independent contractor. The reason for that is the compliance process is quite a bit easier. With an independent contractor, you basically send a 1099 at the end of the year and you're done. With an employee, you need to withhold federal income tax, you need to withhold social security tax, you need to file quarterly payroll tax returns. So the process for compliance, the paperwork, is a little more difficult. So you kind of have this temptation to choose to have that worker be classified as an independent contractor. The thing I want you to remember today is the classification of your new worker is not a matter of choice. The overall relationship of the worker to the company dictates whether they're an independent contractor or an employee. Now the IRS has a form that you can actually complete and send in and they'll choose for you. Now that may not be a good idea for you, but they will do that. It's a good idea to download the form, which is IRS Form SS8, and it basically just has a list of questions. Even if you don't send the form in for a formal determination, going through those questions will give you a good instinct of which classification your worker should be classified as. There are really three different areas on that questionnaire. They talk about financial control, behavioral control, and relationship control. So as you can tell, the key word is control. Who controls the work product? How the work is done? Who provides the tools to get the work done? Uh, Do you tell the worker when to come to work? Maybe even what to wear to work? The more that the company controls the work product, the more likely that worker is an employee. The more that the worker controls the product, they're more likely an independent contractor. In addition to that, the Department of Labor has issued new guidelines that look at the overall economic dependency of the worker on the company. Uh, An easy example of that is if the worker works solely for your company, works 40 hours a week, basically full time, they are most likely economically dependent upon your company. And if that's the case, they should most likely be classified as an employee. So again, lots of detail there, lots of more information on our website. You can go to nasc.org. You can also go to the Department of Labor website at dol.gov or the IRS website at irs.gov. Lots of information to help you with this process. But the main thing to remember is the classification is not a matter of choice. So go to those websites, ask some questions, make sure you make the right choice in classification, and always remember you're not alone.